Buenos dias, mi amigos. Today, I'm in central Buenos Aires. And today, we're gonna to talk exactly about that city that I'm in. We're gonna discover the pros and cons of living in one of South America's most beautiful, most beloved cities. Come along, vamos. So with any story about any city, we have to start first with the pros. And the first pro about Argentina, at least as it stands today, is that for pretty much any foreigner that comes to Argentina from around the world, it is very, very cheap. The Argentinian economy overall in the last five years, six years has been experiencing really high, really bad, impactful inflation. And while that is bad for Argentina, if you are coming to live in Argentina as a foreigner, especially if you're making euros or dollars, this means that you can get a really good deal on housing, on food, on all the things that you can buy in the country, and it makes it very advantageous. So Argentina is one of the cheapest countries now that you can probably go to in South America, and I would compare it to being a little bit more expensive than Southeast Asia in some regards, but in general, pretty cheap. I would say, if I really had to, if I had to compare it to somewhere, I would say it's about the same price as Mexico, for those of you that have been. My point in bringing this up is not to say that exploiting economies that are at risk and doing really poorly is a good thing. My point is just that the country at the moment for foreigners is cheap. And if you're interested in going to a country or spending time in a country where you can get a good value for your dollar, a good bang for your buck, Argentina definitely is one of those countries. The second point I'll make is that I think Argentina overall is very European in orientation and in society structure. So what I mean by that is that if you're coming from the West, the United States, Canada, or you're coming from Europe, Argentina really feels like it's one of those places. I think it's kind of like Latin America light, meaning that of course they speak Spanish and the culture is very Latin in a lot of ways. You know, they have the dancing, they have the, the kind of other cultural aspects that you think of in Latin America. They just have a very European way of going about it. So I found walking around Buenos Aires, the city center, you know, you feel like you're in France, you feel like you're in, uh, in Spain, you feel like you're in Portugal. And I think that sort of European pride and European heritage that they built into their city center kind of exp expands into the way that they go about their daily lives. Uh, they love European, especially Italian imported drinks and beverages. A lot of the food that they eat is very European, pizza, pasta, gnocchi, uh, stuff along those lines. So uh, it's very far away from the, the hyper indigenous, spicy kind of culture that a lot of other Latin America is defined by. And I really found that it's much more akin to life in Italy, Spain, or Portugal. The third pro of Buenos Aires, I would say, is that Buenos Aires overall is quite safe for foreigners, which is pretty fantastic and not something to be taken for granted when you're traveling through Latin America. The majority of the nicer areas of this city are very, very safe, and the majority of the middle class neighborhoods in Buenos Aires are also quite safe. Uh, I would, of course, worry, uh, worry for pickpockets and to walk around the city, you know, not like as a dumb tourist. But other than that, I feel like even walking around at night in Buenos Aires is not necessarily the worst place to do that. I felt it definitely was safer than a lot of cities I've been to in the United States. And they seem to have a pretty reasonable police presence if anything was to go wrong. The taxis even were all pretty well monitored and I didn't have one problem with any taxi, with any Uber, with any Cabify, with any person. Um, we're in a lot of other countries that is sometimes an issue based on, you know, based on safety and security standards and also the feeling that they can rip off tourists. So that's one thing that I definitely appreciated about Buenos Aires. The fourth big pro of Buenos Aires is that it's full of amazing neighborhoods with cool cafes, trendy bars, uh, good local breweries, and all of that good stuff. I found the restaurant culture really hip, really swanky. There's different areas like Recoleta or Palermo or uh, San Telmo, which are fantastic places to go out for, you know, a night out to go get drinks with friends, to go eat at a cool restaurant. And because they have this sort of hip kind of idea to their society, it means that they have a lot of things that are not just Argentinian food. They also have, you know, like Vietnamese restaurants, they have other Asian influences, you can get uh, American style burgers, you can get Italian style pizza pasta. So I think that they really, they're, it's a really, really trendy place and you can really feel it. And there's pretty much endless places to go out and spend your night. I would say the last pro is the weather. The weather here is phenomenal, you know? Uh, it's not too hot in the summer, it's not too cold in the winter. Uh, it's on the uh, Rio de la Plata, which is this kind of basin. So you get this kind of like coastal breeze from the Atlantic 
which is very nice. Um, it can be rainy at times. It can be a bit cold in the winter, I guess, marginally, but if you're looking for a nice temperate place to enjoy some overall nice weather, I think it's kind of hard to beat a city like Buenos Aires. They really, they really, they really picked a good spot. While of course it is great to talk about the good things, we of course need to talk about the bad things. So these are my five cons for living in Buenos Aires. Con number one, which is a big deal, is that you cannot use a credit card as a foreigner in Argentina. Now, what does that mean? Well, of course you can use a credit card if you want, but the rate that you'll get charged on your credit card is not the real rate that's happening within their currency. Let me explain. Argentina has basically two currency exchanges. They have a parallel exchange rate, meaning that they have a government fixed exchange rate, which is about 110 Argentinian pesos to the to one US dollar. So that's like a normal exchange rate. You'd be like, okay, that sounds like normal. Every country has an exchange rate. Yes, but because of government regulations on currency exchange and uh, basically currency moving with uh, between countries, uh, this created a shadow market for the Argentinian peso. So the Argentinian peso also has a more, it just has a different rate. So uh, you can access this rate by sending your money via Western Union and you using cash. And so what that parallel exchange rate, it, it does, it gives you about 70% more bang for your buck when you go to Argentina. If you use the official exchange rate, which they try to price control, Argentina then would be kind of expensive. But if you use the real exchange rate, which the government is not messing with, then you get about, for example, like 190 Argentinian pesos for one US dollar, which means that you get almost 80% more value for every dollar that you exchange. That means that you're basically operating in a cash-based society because your credit card is always pinned to the official exchange rate. So that can be kind of annoying. Like let's say you wanna buy a domestic airline ticket. Uh, they have the option to pay in cash, which is super cool. Not a lot of countries have that, but it means that you're always sending yourself cash and going to the store to withdraw it. And because it's a cash-based economy where people are sending a lot of money to themselves, the lines are very long. So the monetary system is messed up. That's very clear and uh, it requires a lot of patience. But if you're willing to put the patience in, you definitely get a better price than, uh, than if you're lazy and wanna use your credit card. The secondary part of this goes with the fact that uh, short-term housing in Argentina is expensive. People know that people, uh, for example, if on an Airbnb, they know that tourists would buy that online using their credit card. And they know that the exchange rate that they're gonna get is gonna be better if you pay via your card and they're gonna make a lot more money. So. For example, you can't really pay for Airbnbs like I normally do when I travel in cash. You can't really negotiate people and they typically put the price pretty high. So for what should have been like a $500 a month apartment, I ended up paying about $1,100 because they know there's no way for you to get around it unless you're in the country and unless you have cash in hand. So not a big fan of that because I don't like feeling like I've gotten ripped off from my apartment, but that's just kind of the system that they've got going on right now. Con number three for me would be the overall transportation in the country from Buenos Aires and then outside of Buenos Aires. So um, Buenos Aires is obviously the biggest city. About 15 million people live in Buenos Aires out of a country of 40 million. So that means almost the whole country is in Buenos Aires, which means bad traffic. Uh, they have a really good subway system, but it doesn't really connect you to everywhere you need to go. So you're gonna have to take some cabs, which means you're gonna sit in traffic for quite a long period of time. It's just a big city. It's the realities of living in a big city. That being said, Buenos Aires is also the hub for all the airlines and everything. But if you're looking at traveling in the country or traveling to other regions of South America, it's not the cheapest place to travel from and it's not the most well-connected place. Of course, the flights exist, but everything is kind of far away. There are no day trips from Buenos Aires that you can really logistically take that were to go to a different city. You could go to Rosario, which is the home of Lionel Messi and Che Guevara. But you know that requires you to hop on a bus or, or drive for at least at least three hours, and then Cordoba, the second city of Argentina, is a nine-hour ride away. So because everybody lives in Buenos Aires, that means the cities are very spread out. So if you want to go to the north of Argentina, you got to take a plane. If you want to go to the south of Argentina, you got to take a plane. Driving isn't really an option unless you have the time. So um, and then also the airlines, the international flights. If you're going to Chile, if you're going to Uruguay, if you're going to uh, Brazil, not the cheapest for the distance that you're going. And even to go to Uruguay, which is just across the uh, just across the Rio de la Plata, they uh, even the ferries are expensive—about 80 euros to take the ferry to uh, to Montevideo. So, 
I would say uh, the transportation as a hub is probably not the best place you could live in the world. The next point I have to make is that everything closes on Sundays. And on the weekend, it's very quiet. So, you know, they have that sort of old school kind of Christian methodology where Sunday is kind of a day off, which is fine. But in a major city, it's kind of weird when everything is closed. So I can give you a nice example, an example. So if you wanted to pay for like an airline ticket, they, and you wanted to pay in cash because you want to get the, the right price, right? You can use something called um, Pago Facil, paying made simple, right? And so it's a cool thing where you can go to Western Union and then you can basically pay any sort of bill that you want. Now the weird thing is, for example, it's not operating on Saturday or on Sunday. So the, uh, one of the major payment platforms for the country, as well as Western Union, which is what you need to get your money uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the week if you're transferring money in, isn't really available on the weekends, which is, which is a shame. And it means that the ones that are open, because there are a few that are open, have massive, massive lines. And for example, you uh, had cafes in my, in my neighborhood during the day were closed. And on Sunday, a lot of restaurants and bars, like everything was closed. So um, not really a big fan of countries where they just close things. And they're just saying, you know, this is our time off and it's time to close things. And that's what it is. So that was one thing that I was kind of like, eh, what's going on here, Buenos Aires? I'm not sure. My last point about Buenos Aires is that um, if you're coming here and you don't speak Spanish, learn some Spanish. Uh, I would say it's not the most English friendly country in the world. I didn't meet that many people just like in my day to day life that spoke English. It's not a problem because I do speak Spanish. But uh, if you don't speak Spanish, it's definitely a place where you should get your vocabulary book out and probably learn some helpful tips for getting around. Um, I don't think that's the end of the world. I don't think that it should be the expectation that when you travel and you go to places, they should speak English or they should speak your language. But it is a, a thing to realize that if you need help uh, along your travels or your trip or your long stay, if you're planning to be an expat, learning Spanish is an excellent way to get in with the community and to become a part of the city that is so great. The final note that I'll make in this video is that Argentina is a wonderful country and Buenos Aires is a wonderful city and it's lovely. But if you're planning on investing time and money into Argentina, you need to realize that the economy is incredibly unstable. That means that if you want to start a business in Argentina, that is a questionable business investment because we just don't know where the economy is going to be. Argentina is experiencing year by year inflation rates of upwards of 50%. And so that means their currency is going through a crisis. That means that anything any amount of cash that you do get that is in Argentinian pesos could devalue 50% in the course of one year and 25% 25 in half a year. So that means that it's a great place to be, it's a great place to rent, it's a great place to, uh, to be a part of, but there are major problems and that's making life in Argentina harder for all of the locals and it's making people question what the future will look like in that country. So um, it depends how long you want to stay but that's something definitely to consider. I loved my time in Argentina. I thought it was one of the most beautiful countries I've probably been to. I think Buenos Aires is a very special city with a lot of culture, a lot of history, really beautiful architecture. Food's okay. I wouldn't say I'm the biggest fan of Argentinian food, but very tasty and the price is right. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, hit me in the DMs and the comments, do all that stuff. Like and subscribe if you'd like. And we've got more content coming from all around the world, especially Latin America, over the next couple months. So thank you guys for watching. Hasta luego and see you next time.